Ohio State loses to Michigan, what is just clearly a heartbreaker. Um, you know, there's no really way around um, that. Just a game that, you know, I think in a lot of ways Ohio State hadn't won. I really did for a lot of it. Um, but they did a few things that just cost them the game. And I think, first and foremost, the biggest um, – well, I mean, you go into this game and there's so little room for error. You already knew – for OSU to win the game, your road team – You had to go in there. You had to, you know, at least you had to win the turnover battle. And that's something they just didn't do. Um, Early on, you had already went through, uh, you had already, you know, had to punt twice. You get the ball, the game's tied at zero. Both defenses kind of, you know, really making a statement early. And then Kyle McCord just throws that really bad, pretty much pick six. Um, They get the ball to seven. The OCU defense had a really good goal line stand, but at the same time, you were given the, you gave him the ball at the seven. It was just a really terrible throw. I mean, sometimes I give the uh, quarterback the benefit of the doubt when they throw a pick like that. This was a really, really terrible throw. Like it was just, it was just so off the mark, so off the mark that it wasn't even close. I think maybe in his head he was thinking, you know, I got to get the ball to Marvin Harrison, and I just I, he didn't make the right read. He said in the press conference he didn't make the right read. Um, just, you know, inexcusable, obviously, but, um, that was one very big key. And then another big key is it's on that last drive of the game uh, of the, of the first half. And you're going down the field at this point, you have that big play to Marvin Harrison Jr. And you get the ball down to this fourth and two situation. You have 45 seconds left. I'm thinking, yeah, this is the play. This is where you got to roll the dice. Go for it. If you're going to win a big game like this, you got to make. Those big plays, it's going to take guts. He lines up a 52-yard field goal. Are we out of our minds? This is the same guy. This is the same team that made that 50-yard decision, and it shanked. Like, how do you not have PT? How do you not learn from your mistakes? If I were Ryan Day in this team, I would never kick a 50-yard field goal again, even if it was to win the game. You know what the result's going to be. And, of course, he hits it. Um, when they call a timeout, which you're not, I've never seen kickers do that. Um, he's a jinx, is it? And obviously, what does he do? He shanks at the exact same side that um, Ruggles did in the national championship game, just to it. That's when I thought we lost the game right there. I thought that sequence lost us the game. Then you go into the second half, and there was a little slimmer of hope for a little bit as you had, um, they were just going on this draw. They, they were, um, just, you know, going on that great drive where they're running the ball and they, they finally figured it out. And I was like, okay, all the defense has to do get that big stop. They couldn't get it. Um, the, when uh, the Michigan, the tackle went down, all the momentum went to that building. You couldn't beat. They were going to score a touchdown on that drive. And then, obviously, you go three and out in a spot where you just can't. And then you're able to stop Michigan a little bit. You get a stop. Um, you come back in the field, you have a really good drive, get the ball to Marvin Harrison Jr. And then, once again, the defense can't make the immediate stop. I thought that third down play was pretty ridiculous. That Obviously, a push off, but you know you can't put it on that. Um, and then you get the ball. But they, fi- they stop him, they get the field goal, they get the ball back. And at this point, you're sitting there, you're like, he's done this before. But if you remember the game against Notre Dame, two picks were dropped. So that's got to be something you factor. But I don't understand. They got to what the um, probably like the 35, 36 yard line. Throw that. Throw a one. Throw it. I don't care if he's double covered. Throw it up to Marvin Harrison Jr. and let him try to make a play on the ball. You, you don't need to get much. Like, sure, it would be nice to get closer, but you don't need to get much closer. You might as well give it a chance. Um, or if you're even Kyle McCord, try to throw that ball out of bounds. But he gets intercepted. Michigan loses for the third time in a row to Michigan. Um, haven't beat Michigan since 2019. It's getting frustrating. Uh, you know, you know, as a fan, you know, it, it gets frustrating. I don't know what you do from here. I don't know where you go. Um, Kyle McCord, probably not the guy. I mean, he's like, he's not even average. He's a below average quarterback. Like when p- people in the media, they're sitting there, they're saying, we, uh, the, you know, you can't expect for uh, Fields, um, Stroud every year. It's not that I'm expecting for average. Like we we won national championships with average quarterbacks. 
Cordell Jones was an average quarterback. Um, JT Barrett, in a lot of ways, was an average quarterback. Um, you can win with an average quarterback. You can't win with below average. You just can't. And, you know, I really think if, this, if, if we would have gotten the college football playoff, I don't know if we could have knocked off Georgia this year. I don't know if we would have had it. The offense just – some of the most insane weapons I've ever seen. But if you can't get the ball to him properly, if it, the offensive line is kind of a struggle too. He was kind of – he can't run at all. So, of course, he got sacked a few times. But they were giving him no help at all. So that's like a little bit of credit I can give them. But um, overall, it was just rough. Ryan Day, some of the play calling, it's just terrible in these big games. Like, like he's one in six in these big games. He has that win against Clemson. That is it. And yeah, should we have beaten Georgia last year? We didn't. He didn't get, he didn't make the field goal. He didn't. So we didn't beat him. Um, it's tough. It's really frustrating. Uh, the path to get in the college football playoff is pretty much impossible. Um, a lot of stuff would have to happen. So I don't, I, I really don't even know if that is, could be a possibility at this point. Um, I do want to talk about the Denzel Burke missed play. It was a clear interception. Uh, the, the refs missed it. I don't know how they missed it. It, it, it could be a go either way play, but I, I think it was a pretty clear interception. Great hustle play by Denzel Burke. I thought he played a really, really good game. Um, Jack Sawyer, JTT, going to have to see more. Um, like one sack, that, that's not going to win you this big game. It's just not going to cut it. Denzel Burke, though, played insane in this game. Um, Marvin Harrison Jr. did everything he could. Uh, Travion, you know, I people are going to dog him, but when you get set up with that bad of play calls to play as well as he did, it, it's pretty impressive. It's just this game came down to bad decision making by the head coach, and well, or whoever's doing it. But I'm pretty sure it's Ryan Day. Maybe it's Harlow. Somebody's making the decisions, and that's pretty much what Ryan Day does. He makes the decision whether to go for it or not on fourth down. So that's a big factor. And um, Kyle McCord, obviously, just some moments. It's just it's inexcusable. So I don't know what you do here. I think you got to get a new QB, and I think you explore the coaching market. If there's really nobody else that you think you have a shot of bringing in, I guess give the guy one more year. But, I, you guys, I don't know. I don't know how much longer, you know, the fan base and, like, just coming from me myself, I don't know how many more times I can lose this game. We haven't won this game in four years. We haven't been to the Big Ten championship game in three years. It's, it's just it's, – it's getting tough. It's getting really tough to stand behind this um, this team when you, you you can see it on the field that they're more talented and they're just coming up short. It's tough. I'm frustrated. Um, I, I don't think Michigan's going to have a chance in the college football playoff. The way that they play is just not suitable to beat a team like Georgia or like them in Texas would be a bit of a shootout. But I, I just I don't see them beating Georgia or Alabama. So. I don't know. But yeah, as we sit right now, tough loss. But I Michigan they got the best of us and we gotta wait three hundred and sixty five more days to uh beat that team up north.